It's no secret that I have a passion and a penchant for thrifting. If you're watching this video or watching my channel, then you probably have too. And in today's video, I'm going to give you guys my tips, just some little pointers that I've learned along the way to help you find those treasures. If you are one that is fascinated by the whole thrifting game, but you don't really partake because you just think it's too gross, then let me put it to you this way. Have you eaten in a public restaurant before and used cutlery that's been used by other people. Have you ever used a public restroom before? You see my point? So thrifting is kind of the same thing, right? Everything gets sanitized, washed, brought back to life, kind of like new so it can be reused. So when you think about it, it really isn't all that different. And there's also really great benefits to thrifting. It does not put a dent in your budget. You are being sustainable and helping the environment you are helping charities. Also, you are dressing in a completely unique way, so individual. The things that you find when you thrift are just so different, unique, vintage, eclectic, that they will put a whole different spin on your personal style and have you looking like nobody else, but in a good way, if you know what I mean. And also, you may find things that may not be your cup of tea or you know it's a great find but it's not in your size, you can buy that item and sell it on eBay as a little side hustle and make some money to go shopping for new items. The first tip is that when you do go thrifting, make sure that you wear separates. Don't wear a dress like I have on today, which is also thrifted by the way. I got this for $20. Isn't it stunning? Okay, I digress. But when you do go thrifting, make sure you wear a top and bottom so you can mix and match. If you're trying on tops, you can mix it, you know, with the bottoms you have on and vice versa. It's just an easy way to get an idea if it's going to work back with your wardrobe and, you know, you don't have to go rummaging around for a bottom to try on with that top that you just found and love. So when I enter a thrift store, I take stock of everything. I look around and I see where it's least populated, where there's not much traffic, and that's where I zoom in. I don't want to be, you know, surrounded by people. I don't want to fight over anything. I'm not that kind of shopper. I just go in with the philosophy that whatever is meant to be mine cannot be stolen from me. And I just head in the most quiet section and I begin rummaging. So when I'm looking at garments, depending on how much time I have, sometimes if I've got, you know, the whole day and I'm not pressed for time, I will look at everything. Sometimes something won't look good on the side. It will look like just a block black, but then you turn it in the front and it has this amazing graphic or cutout work that's really surprising. But generally I scan items and I scan for a fabric, I scan for a print or a color. That's generally how I work. So if I see a print that catches my eye, I will look at it. If I see a fabric that catches my eye, I will pull it out and look at it. And also a block color. If I see a beautiful color that catches my eye, I will look at it. Another thing I also do is step back. If I'm looking for a certain length, I look down and I see, is there any midi lengths? Is there any maxi lengths? I gauge the length of everything and only pull out the length of things that I know that I'm after. So that's how I do a quick scan of things when I'm pressed for time so that I gather a curated little collection of items to take with me into the fitting room. Once I have those items in my hands, I inspect them for any stains or just any real tidiness. If there's a lot of peeling, I won't take the item. If there's a really noticeable stain, especially with white, if I see something I like but it has that yellow tinge to it that white normally gets after a certain amount of time, I won't take the item. If it looks really trashy and not in good condition, I won't take the item. However, if there is a broken zip or some stitching coming undone or a hole that can be mended, if it's something that you know you can take to a tailor and can be fixed, I look past that and I take it. I am a complete lover of vintage and you can spot vintage 
from the tags. If you don't know what a vintage tag is, it's because you probably haven't seen one because when you do see one, you will notice it because they don't make them like that anymore. The fonts are very different. The labels are much larger. Generally, I find that the care tags are attached to the label in the back when it's vintage and where the item is made. When I do find a vintage label, I am thrilled and then I read everything on it and I see where it's made, the fabric composition, then I make my decision on whether it's, you know, something I wanna try on and see if it'll work, if I can modernize it. So when I'm looking at clothing, I never look at clothing as is. I don't just look at a dress and think, no, I don't like it. I look at a dress and think, wow, I could cinch this in at the waist. It is huge. You know, it's not my size, but I can cinch it in and I can take up the hem and I can ruch up the sleeve. I always try to think of ways to work around the garment, to change it up, even with tops. You know, if it's too long, I think I can just chop it and make it shorter and make it look more cropped and tuck it into my high-waisted bottoms. I guess this is why I love oversized styling so much because you can just style it in so many different ways. Whereas if you buy something that's very form fitting, you really have nowhere to go with it. But if you have something oversized, you can belt it, you can blouse it, you can make it look form fitting if you like by tucking it in. There are just so many ways to style something when you have more fabric to work with. Which brings me to my next tip, which is probably one of the most important tips I can impart to you guys. And that is look in all sizes. I hardly ever find things in my size, you guys, hardly ever. I am a size eight, I would say, eight to 10. I always look small, medium, even large. I have been known to buy things size 18, 20, 22. It just doesn't make sense, especially when it comes to vintage, you know, back in the day, sizing was so different to what it is today. Clothing, patterns, cuts were so much smaller than they are today. And really there is no generic sizing anymore. You could go to Country Road and be a size 12 and then you could go to Witchery and be a size eight. It just doesn't make sense. Don't think that I'm a size eight, I'm only gonna look in size eight because it doesn't work that way. And if you are a stickler for only having a certain number on your tag that represents what size you are and you will not go out of bounds of that number, then please let go of that idea because it really is silly. It really is so silly. I get it all the time at work. I see women come in and they will say, do you have this in a size 10? And I will say, yes. And I will give them the 10, but I will say, you know, I recommend you sizing up and they will not hear of it because they don't want to buy anything that's a size 12. There's no way in hell that they are a size 12. So I am not buying a 12. I am a 10 lady. And I say, okay. And I back off. That is just me. I don't care what the tag says. I really don't. I have size eight to size 20 in my wardrobe and I love it. It's all about how you style things and how you wear them. But having said that, I will say that when you are a more voluptuous body type, it is harder to go with that more oversized styling. But do not wear form fitting tight clothing either. Skim, skim, make sure clothing skims on your body. That is what is the most flattering on any body shape. And when in doubt, just size up one size. Sometimes the first section I hit is the men's section because there's less men thrifting than there is women, to be honest. I love shopping in the men's section. That's where I find my band tees. That's where I find my beautiful shirts, my beautiful pastel colored shirts. Because believe you me, nobody makes shirts the way men's shirts are made. I cannot stand women's shirts, the way they taper in and then come out and then they have these seams right down the bust. I do not like many women's cut shirts. I love wearing men's boxer shorts to bed. I love men's jeans, like men's Levi's jeans. I look for vintage styles, not only just for me, but for my son and my dad. 
I love the men's section. I also look in the teenage section as well. Yes, I do. I look in the larger sizes because sometimes they have really fun prints. If you get a bigger size, it doesn't really look like a teenage garment. And if you style it in the right way, you can pick up something really great. My point is, do not limit yourself to just ladies. I look everywhere. I look in men's, I look in ladies, I look in nightwear. Nightwear, I find my beautiful slips. I wear them as slip dresses. You know, the long slip nighty dresses. Well, I love to wear those as slip dresses. If they're in the right color and they don't look too nightwear, you can wear those as a beautiful slip dress with a lovely coat over the top or a beautiful jacket and a gorgeous heel or boot, and that is just a gorgeous outfit. I find little camis to wear underneath blazers. I find my kimono robes to wear just as robes, obviously, but also as just beautiful outerwear. They just create such a statement and such a pop of color. So just look everywhere. Don't just limit yourself to ladies because you will miss out on the most amazing treasures. I always look for details. When I dress, there's always something unexpected about the way I dress. It's all in the details, right? So if there's something special about a top, something different, I gravitate towards it. I don't go for the basics, for the things that I can pick up anywhere, for the real generic, you know, white tee or, you know, striped tee. I try to steer clear of fast fashion brands as well because they're generally cheap quality to begin with. So once they get to the thrift stores, they're not great. They're not in great quality. So I really try to look out for those special one-off pieces, vintage, something very detailed, something that has applique or lace, leather pants that are vintage, something silk, something with a beautiful print. You know what I mean. Another thing I always do is I check the fabric composition. I love to know what the fabric is on what I am buying. If I find something that says 100% silk, I know that I've stumbled on a, on a treasure. I mean, 100% silk is so expensive. I love viscose. Viscose is generally very soft and wears and washes really well. It's a beautiful fabric. I love 100% cotton as well. It's breathable. It's just a beautiful natural fabric that you can't go wrong with. And when you find 100% cotton, you can't let it go. Also with wool, if I find something that says 100% wool, I'm amazed I pick it up because 100% wool is just so expensive in the shops and actually very rare to find. You always find a wool blend, but it's really rare that you find 100% wool. I always look at the care tag, not only just for the fabric composition, but I love to know where the garment's made. I am thrilled when I find garments that say made in India or made in USA or England or France or Spain. Those places just scream quality to me. They use beautiful fabrics and textiles and you know that it's a garment that isn't cheaply made. When I do see made in China, I'm always a little bit disappointed. I'm not gonna lie, but if I love it, I'm gonna take it and I don't care. I always love to find things that are made overseas. It really matters to me where something is made. Generally speaking, anywhere in Asia, Indonesia, India, they do the most beautiful cottons, just so soft. They wash and wear well. They're always 100% cotton. And I get so excited when I find, you know, band tees that are, you know, made in India and silks as well, just beautiful 100% silks that are made in Asia as well. And then I love finding more modern pieces that are made in the USA and France because they use really good quality fabrics and their make is just really good as well. So when it comes to accessories, that gets a little bit tricky for me. I find accessories a lot harder to thrift. They are generally not in good condition and also not very good quality either. So when it comes to shoes, I don't want shoes that are dated. I want something that either looks vintage 
or that is current. I don't really do the dated shoe and it has to be in really good nick. I don't mind if they've been worn, I get over that. You know, Glen 20, I give them a good clean, I get over that. They either have to be vintage or current. With bags, I always look for small bags. I don't really look for large bags unless they're a tote. And when it comes to small bags, I look for beaded bags because I know that if I find a beaded bag, the chances are it's gonna be vintage. When it comes to beautiful quality leather bags, I would much rather go to a consignment store and pick up a beautiful designer bag for half the price and know that it's authentic and do it that way. The bags that I've usually found while thrifting are very eclectic. So just little beachy things, little beaded things, a tote, just something more of a fashion styling statement than a staple. Now, when it comes to jewelry, I do a quick scan. I fall in love with very few things. I picked these earrings up for a couple of dollars at my Salvation Army. I love the way they just have the same color as my dress. I think they're so pretty and vintage looking. But I find that jewelry can be very overpriced when it comes to thrifting. So I'm very selective about jewelry and I won't buy anything that looks too tarnished or cheap. It has to be really special in order for me to buy it. I have very sensitive ears. I cannot wear costume jewelry, so I pretty much avoid earrings, but I really loved these and that's why I got them and thank God they don't irritate my ears at all. When it comes to jewelry, I am very picky and it's very rare that you'll find something, you know, special and vintage. Like I've never come across a pair of Chanel earrings or, you know, anything like that. Again, you need to go to a consignment store for that kind of thing. But I did find my vintage square faced watch. It did not have a battery that worked, but that did not deter me. The lady told me that it did work when it came in. It's just, it needs new battery. So I looked at the watch. I had been looking for a square watch for such a long time. I loved the shape. I love that it was gold because it's all I wear. I only wear gold. And I thought, yes, I'm happy to pay for a battery and get it serviced. This is what I have been looking for. The watch was inscripted to someone and the date was 86. So I knew it was vintage. You know, it had a story to it. That's what I love. I love when things have a story to it. I knew that it was vintage. I knew, you know, all I had to do was go and buy a battery and it would work and I would have a square face watch that was different and the brand was good, it was Citizen, it was a you know well-known brand. So that's really all I have to say about accessories. So once you have collected a few things, you need to take them into the fitting room and try everything on. Don't go buying things without trying things on, even though they are so inexpensive. Because when you try things on, you see things that you otherwise would not have seen. I remember once I saw a beautiful dress. It was in this rusty color. It felt very Indian inspired and it was a midi dress. It had a lot of volume with these balloon sleeves and gold embroidery on the neckline. It was stunning. But then when I tried it on in the fitting room, it just fit all wrong. It had a big hole underneath here somewhere and it was just totally wrong. It just was, so bad, I thought, thank God I tried this on. It did not end up turning out anything like I thought it would in the fitting room. So my point is try everything on, turn, you know, at all angles, and just make sure that you know you're gonna wear it. Don't just buy it because it's inexpensive. Make sure you love it, make sure it suits you, and make sure that you know you're gonna wear it. Buy what you love. When you are thrifting, just get into the spirit of it because it really is the hunt that is the thrill about thrifting. It's about the unknown, what you will find, hunting for treasures. It is so much fun. I love it so much. When you see something, it may not make sense. It may, you know, have a stain. It may have a rip. I know it sort of cancels out everything that I've just said, but if you love it, just buy it. It's in your hands, it found you, you found it, just buy it. So just buy what you love and have fun because in the end, you're not going into debt to buy this, whatever it is, $2, $3, $4, $5 garment that you saw and loved. It's gonna bring you joy, you're gonna wear it a few times and then you'll get rid of it. Just like me, like all my thrifted pieces, 
I love them, I wear them, I get joy out of them, and then I pass them on and I go out and thrift more. I thrift every single week without a doubt, sometimes more than once a week. I bring everything home, I wash everything, I steam everything, I hang everything up, I wear everything. Sometimes I'll wear something once and think, no, this isn't really me. What was I thinking? And I'll put it on eBay. Sometimes I'll just pass it back to charity. And sometimes I will have things forever and ever because they are just treasures. So have fun with it. Don't, you know, put too much thought into it and go out and find your treasures because once you start, it is addicting. Believe you me, it is addicting and so much fun. You guys, I really hope that you found this video useful and that you will watch it before you go thrifting or that you will make notes and let me know how you go. If you haven't thrifted before, I hope that I've inspired you to go out there and thrift a little bit. And if you would like to see more thrift content and styling videos from me, then please subscribe to my channel. And I really hope that I see you guys in my